In this video, I am showing the wheel cleaner that can replace 50% of your exterior detailing products and how to remove even the most extreme brake dust with no scrubbing. What's going on guys? Luke here with Wilson Auto Detailing. Let's go ahead and jump into the two products that I'm highlighting in this video. And before I get into the wheel cleaner that can replace up to about 50% of your exterior detailing products, I wanna talk to you about an acidic wheel cleaner that is gonna blow your mind. Check out this wheel on this Mini Cooper. You can tell, obviously, it is not detailed on a regular basis. The brake dust has accrued in a big way. This is the wheel on the driver's side and it is seriously bad. This is the type of wheel that slows you down a lot as a pro detailer on location in the sun working on somebody's car. This is an area that I call like the time suck area of detailing. Just like interior carpets can become a time suck, wheels like this that have got this caked on brake dust can become a time suck. Now the product that I am soaking the inner barrel and the face of this wheel with is aluminum brightener from Superior Products. This is an acidic based wheel cleaner. I am not going to touch this wheel. I'm just going to soak it in the product, let it sit for about two to two and a half minutes because I'm inside my garage. I'm gonna do this in the sun here in just a second, but that's how long I'm gonna let it break down this brake dust before I start blasting it off with the pressure washer. Now, as I start rinsing this off and bring you guys in for the after result where I did not scrub this wheel at all, I want to make a few notes. The first thing to say is that yes, acidic based wheel cleaners are always, almost always going to outperform form alkaline wheel cleaners and they can take care of brake dust really no problem. However, I want to highlight the fact that I can take my fingers and rub them on the inner barrel of this wheel and get absolutely no brake dust residue on my fingers at all after just letting this product sit and then blasting it off with the pressure washer. Of course, some of that was assisted with the pressure of the water itself, but this is highlighting how effective this acidic cleaner is. It is absolutely unreal. So check out side by side the difference of the face of the wheel before and after and just for good measure showing you guys how I could get a crazy amount of residue on my fingers beforehand and then afterwards scrubbing my hand on the inner barrel of the wheel and not being able to pull any off whatsoever. The wheel looks absolutely insanely good. The other thing I want to highlight here is the fact that I can put my fingers on the inner barrel of the wheel and still not get any residue even though I did not scrub anything is insane. Any detailer who details on a regular basis knows that the inner barrel is really the brake dust that's most most difficult to pull off and I didn't even touch it with a brush. Now, to be fair, I'm going to show another wheel. This is a wheel from a Sequoia and it is seriously caked in brake dust. This Sequoia is basically never detailed. I believe it's about a 2013 or a 2014. It's got white paint, so we're gonna be showing some other products on it here in just a second, but I'm gonna soak this wheel in the same way that I did before with the aluminum brightener, the acidic-based wheel cleaner. I also wanna highlight the fact that I wear a mask anytime I use a product like this because there are chemical components of acidic-based wheel cleaners specifically that you really do need to use protection, not just like a mask for breathing, but also potentially even for your eyes if you wear sunglasses or also gloves covering up your skin. The thing that I tend to be most concerned about is breathing it in, so I always, always wear a mask when I'm spraying something like this, but I'm not gonna touch this wheel either. This is a wheel that has more brake dust on it than even the Mini Cooper, and it is more caked on because it is detailed even fewer times than the Mini Cooper is. So I'm just spraying it, letting it sit, and I wanna do the exact same experiment. Now I'm bringing you guys in for the close-up as I am pressure washing all of this away just to show you how it rips off the brake dust with no scrubbing whatsoever. This is one of those things that can speed your exterior detailing process up so significantly that you might never go back to using any other kind of product. So this is really a fantastic tool if you are taking the protective measures for your health. And I want to highlight that because it's something I think about a lot the more I detail. Now I'm going to come in for the after result here. And of course the face of the wheel looks absolutely fantastic. That's sort of the easy part when it comes to brake dust and day-to-day -day detailing. But I want to take my fingers and scrub them on the inside of the barrel and you can see once again it ripped off the brake dust from the inside as well. Now one of the things to highlight here is the fact that you can get these kind of results touchless with a wheel cleaner like this means if I took a brush to any part of this I could get 100% perfect results if that's what I was looking to do. So the before and after of the face of this wheel and the inner barrel of this wheel is really just insane okay there's no other way to say it other than to be able to get these kind of results without touching a wheel is really awesome. Now this brings me to the second product that I want to highlight in this video is called Dark Fury from the same company, Superior Products. Let me give you guys one of the most thorough breakdowns of this product used in like a thousand different scenarios as fast as I can so that you guys can in a few minutes significantly speed up your exterior detail process. Just as a disclaimer, the dilution ratio that I'm using for Dark Fury for the remainder of this video is 10 to 1 in every single application. Let's jump into the same exact Sequoia here using a different wheel and in this case a tire and a wheel well as well because this is an alkaline cleaner and it can be 
be used to clean both wheels, tires, and wheel wells. So the before of this wheel, tire, and wheel well is really what you would expect, right? This thing is not detailed on a regular basis. It looks absolutely horrible. I'm gonna rinse it with a pressure washer very quickly and then douse this in 10 to 1 Dark Fury. One of the things I wanna highlight as you guys are watching me work and do some very basic agitation in order to get this part of the car detailed is Dark Fury is what I would probably call the most all-purpose wheel cleaner that I have ever used as well as the best alternative to acidic-based cleaners. So no matter what kind of acidic cleaner you use, whether it's a superior product, whether it's Meguiar's Wheel Brightener, whether it's Nano Skin Acidic Wheel Cleaner, there's lots on the market, but many detailers don't want to include that type of risk in their business because like I said, though probably 90% of the wheels we deal with are not going to be messed up by an acidic cleaner, that last 10% can be messed up pretty bad and a lot of detailers don't want to take the risk. Dark Fury is really what I would call the best alternative. Now I'm going to rinse off the product from the wheel tire and the wheel well and I want to highlight the wheel first. Of course, the face of the wheel looks absolutely insane, but I want to show you guys I can scrub the inner barrel of that wheel with my fingers once again and come out completely clean. So the before and the after of this brake dust is insane. And I want to highlight this because alkaline wheel cleaners that are super effective in day-to-day -day real world detailing can be difficult to come by. It's why I'm putting so much emphasis on the Dark Fury. Yes, I love Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner, but when it gets alkaline and it gets safer for wheels and includes some other parts of the car that you can also detail, it also tends to get weaker for specifically brake dust. So the trade-off can be difficult for many detailers, but I think this is an insanely great solution. I want to come in really quickly to this tire after it has dried so you can see how matte black that tire has been kind of restored to the original appearance. It's perfectly ready to be dressed. I barely scrubbed the tire or the wheel well, and if you avoid sort of looking at the damage and the painted metal area inside the wheel well and just look at the black plastic, it has been completely degreased by the Dark Fury, and now I'm ready not just to throw some spray wax on the face of the wheel, but I'm ready to dress the side of the tire and the wheel well. And all of this was done with literally one layer of scrubbing. I didn't rinse it off and come back in and rinse it off and come back in. It was one fell swoop. All of it got done at the same time. Now, of course, for the professional mobile detailers like I was for so many years, it's important to do this in the sun. So I want to transition to a tire, a wheel, and a wheel well in the sun where the before looks absolutely the same as every other wheel. It's terrible and it's caked in brake dust. And often the driver's side wheel is actually more covered in brake dust than other wheels. And so it's something you notice if you see cars on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to treat this the exact same as I treated every other wheel. I'm going to douse it in some water, of course, spray 10 to 1 Dark Fury, and I'm going to take care of all of these things in one fell swoop. First the wheel well, then the sidewall of the tire, then I'm going to come in for the face of the wheel and the inner barrel of the wheel as well. Now, as I rinse this off in direct sun, and I'm not in a hurry, and some of the Dark Fury is going to dry on the wheel as I'm addressing the other areas, but it does not damage any part of the wheel whatsoever at this particular dilution in this scenario. Now, come in for the after result here. You guys remember what it looked like before. I can put my fingers once again on the inner barrel specifically. That's what I want to highlight. The face of the wheel is generally the easy part. It's the inner barrel where you get that corroding into the metal from brake dust that has sat there for a long time. So the fact that I can clean this terrible Sequoia in direct sun in 85 degree weather and like 80% humidity and it dried on the wheel and there was no damage whatsoever, this is two big thumbs up from me. Now I'm always going to be cautious saying that a product is never going to damage something. Any product pushed to a limit can damage something in some scenario, but just understand from a 10 to 1 dilution in the direct sun on a factory clear coated wheel like this, when it dries on the wheel, which is inevitable because it is so hot, I can simply reactivate the, the chemical with a little bit of water or reactivate it by spraying some more chemical on the face of the wheel or just rinse it off entirely. And I'm not worried about it damaging anything. The Dark Fury is being sprayed directly onto the paint underneath the wheel well in the area that is just the white paint folded over the lip. And that's an area that needs to be cleaned. And so at the same time that I'm cleaning the wheel well, the wheel and the tire. I'm also cleaning those painted surfaces under there, which are very easy to see when they are dirty because it's white paint. Now let's move to one of the other most frustrating areas of an exterior detail, which is the bugs. You guys can see on the white paint, specifically on the front of the Sequoia, in direct sun on the hot white paint, the bugs are terrible and they're exactly what you would expect. You have some areas with huge bug guts. You have other areas with simple rock chips. You have some areas with smaller bugs and you've just got kind of a beat up fender. And like I said, on white paint, it's particularly easy to see. The first thing I'm going to do is just rinse it with a pressure washer and then I'm taking my pump sprayer with the 10 to 1 Dark Fury and I'm going to douse this entire area. The first thing I want to highlight here is that this area is made up of a lot of different materials. Chrome, plastic from the headlight, the clear coated paint, and black trim both porous and non-porous in different areas and all of it is going to be soaked in the Dark Fury. You can see I'm not holding back. I'm also going to let the product sit for about a minute.
minute and a half to two and a half minutes in the sun. I am not going to scrub any of the paint. At best, I'm gonna take a brush and just get into the black trim porous areas that are kind of hard to get into with really anything, right? And I'm just gonna scrub those areas real quick. I'm not touching the plastic, I'm not touching the paint, I'm not touching the chrome. All of that is just gonna be addressed with my pressure washer. Now you guys can see in the close up of me taking my pressure washer across the paint how effective the chemical has broken down the bugs and just general miscellaneous dirt on the front of this vehicle. And that is what I'm looking for as a mobile detailer when I am in direct sun on white paint where you can see everything. We need the chemical to do the brunt of the work, especially when you're trying to go quickly, once again, when you're working in the direct sun. This is no exception. It's absolutely ripping the bugs off, no problem. And I wanna bring you guys in for an after result really quickly so you can see how dramatic the before and after really is. Like I said, I love showing this on white paint because it's so obvious. So barring the rock chips and any scratches or basically permanent damage in the paint, you can see that the bugs have been completely removed and I don't even have to include a bug removal sequence or step inside of this exterior detail. This was enough and now when I come in for the exterior wash, anything that might even be left over at all is gonna be ripped right off and once again, I basically put two steps in one in my exterior detail process in an area that is really hard to get with traditional washing. And to highlight the versatility of this, I wanna repeat the exact same thing with gray paint on the front of this minivan that rarely gets detailed and is covered in bugs. Once again, we've got plastic, we've got clear coated paint, we've got black trim, both porous and non-porous, and we're soaking the whole thing in the 10 to 1 Dark Fury. When we come in afterwards, when we've allowed a little bit of time for that chemical decontamination, and this is happening in the direct sun, by the way, on even hotter paint, it is still ripping off those bugs, no problem. And I wanna bring you guys in for the after result here and just show you side by side the before and after how dramatic this is. This is the kind of thing that has to be worked into the standard operating procedure of your pro detailing business because this is how you systematize getting insanely good results in difficult to work in environments without sacrificing your sanity. As you guys are looking at the before and after, I have to mention that if you guys have been in direct sun working for hours and having to hyper focus on one part of the car to try to get the results you want, you know how maddening that is as a pro detailer. And unless you've been there, you probably can't relate, but products like this cut out that anxiety and stress and just allow you to cut right to the point, get the result you need and move on with your life. Now let's take a look at the lower rocker panels on the white paint of the Sequoia. They're absolutely covered in road tar, in miscellaneous dirt, grease and grime that number one, does not come off generally with a pre-foam rinse. It generally also does not come off, at least not completely, during an agitation wash. Let's take the Dark Fury 10 to one and just soak the lower rocker panel, including all of that road tar. Let it sit for about, again, two minutes in the direct sun. And now I wanna bring you guys in for the close up here, not scrubbing anything, but just using my pressure washer to blast the dirt, debris, road tar, grease and grime off of the white paint on these lower rocker panels before I do anything, before I get to the agitation wash, before I get to the foam wash, I'm gonna pre-treat these areas so they're taken care of chemically so that as I follow up with my necessary next steps, I don't ever have to come back to this area of the car and chemicals like this allow me to do that. You guys know it's difficult to rip off the dirt from these areas because it tends to adhere to the paint really, really strongly and this chemical breaks it down very quickly. I also wanna highlight my ability to peel off the surface dirt and surface grease and grime from the door panels and the fenders of the white car. You can see kind of this line of demarcation I've created where I've sort of come in close and created like this strip of white just with my pressure washer because the chemical has broken down at such a high level that surface grease and grime that generally we're depending on our pre-foam wash to do, but you guys can see in empirically real time how effective this chemical is at doing it. You can see literally just the stark contrast of the before and after of where I've sprayed the pressure washer on the lower rocker panels after letting that chemical break down all of that miscellaneous dirt and then the above or top areas of the door that have not been treated and that are still just dry white paint. I wanna bring you into the driver's side door of the gray van as well so we can see this phenomenon happen on gray paint. You can see kind of that sappy area on the driver's side door, not really sure what it is. Again, miscellaneous dirt, grease and grime as well as the lower rocker panel which is covered in all the road debris and grease and grime that you can imagine. Again, I'm gonna spray simply with my pressure washer, treat that area with the 10 to one Dark Fury, letting it sit in direct sun for about a minute and a half in this case so it doesn't totally dry. Then coming in, no scrubbing whatsoever, just with my pressure washer. And I wanna bring you in for the after so you can see once again, the stark contrast between the before and the after. This is the type of result that I'm trying to get before I get into any agitation. Not only is it going to save me a crazy amount of time, but it's a domino that makes all other dominoes fall, meaning the rest of my exterior process 
process gets easier using this product in this type of application. And finally, one of the easiest parts of the car to use this on directly is just really dirty black trim. So I'll show you the Sequoia really quickly, the black trim that lines basically the area where we step up into the car. It's absolutely disgusting, dirty, and faded. I'm gonna treat it with the 10 to 1 Dark Fury, scrub it very lightly, blast it with a pressure washer, and you guys can see the drier result afterwards after it's dried in the sun, how good it looks. No need to break out any degreaser, any all-purpose cleaner. I'm already using this product as sort of my all-purpose exterior cleaner, and I can use it on all of these surfaces. And the same is true of the Mini Cooper, the lower black trim as well as the lower rocker panels on this light blue car. It's really easy to see all the dirt that accrues there. You guys can see the before, really nasty. I'm gonna spray it quickly with my pressure washer. I'm gonna treat it with a 10 to 1 Dark Fury, letting it sit for about two to two and a half minutes because again, this is indoors. And then I'm just gonna take my pressure washer close up. Once again, I know there's no rock chips. I'm not gonna be stripping away any paint and I'm not scrubbing anything. I'm just blasting off the debris that the chemical's broken down. And let me bring you guys in for the after result here. If you can look past the damaged areas of the black trim because some of those areas actually are damaged, there's no dirt or debris or miscellaneous dirt left over whatsoever, not on the lower rocker panel and not on the black trim. In fact, I can even take my hand, rub that side of the door and you can see no grease, no grime on my fingers whatsoever. It's completely clean. This could kind of roll over into a whole touchless wash if I didn't even want to do an agitation wash because that's how effective this product really is. Now, one of the things I always like to test with a product like this that I can kind of categorize as my all-purpose cleaner for the exterior because it covers so many different categories of detailing, I like to test its limits and really see what does it damage, what does it not damage, and in different scenarios, how does it react? So I have three test hoods, both red, black, and white. They generally sit outside and they accrue a lot of the same damage, dirt, debris as a regular car does. And so 24 hours before doing this, I actually sprayed each side, the left side and the right side of all three of these test hoods with the Dark Fury diluted 10 to one. And I didn't do anything else. I just let it sit and literally bake in direct sun for over 24 hours. It also sat outside, of course, 12 hours during the nighttime. Then I brought in each of these test hoods one by one. And I want to start with the red one first. I simply used some optimum no rinse on both the left and the right side to wipe them down. And I want to bring you guys in to take a closer look both at the left and the right side of this test hood in that you can see there is no chemical burn. There is no chemical damage. There's no staining from the product diluted 10 to one baking in the direct sun on the red hood. I want to move now to the black hood. I did the exact same thing with a simple optimum no rinse solution, rinsing and wiping down both the left and the right side. Now the black test hood is actually the one I use the most. So in the overhead lights, you're going to see a ton of swirls. You're going to see a ton of damage, even some dings. And you're also going to see a little bit of shading, which is actually a high spot from a ceramic coating. It's not a chemical burn from anything else. It's an intentional high spot from a ceramic coating. The Dark Fury diluted 10 to 1 baking in direct sun on this particular paint did not damage anything. I'm not making a statement that it cannot damage anything, but I'm just pushing the limits a little bit to see what we can do with this product. And I wanted some empirical data. Now you guys have got a good look at both the red paint and the black paint. I now want to bring in the white paint as well. Again, on the far left, far right, I simply wiped it down with the optimum no rinse, removed any dry product. And you can see in the overhead lights, once again, other than the orange peel, there's no chemical staining. Diluted 10 to 1 Dark Fury did not do anything to this paint. And like I said, I literally sprayed it with the pump sprayer and doused each side. And I walked away and let it bank in the sun for about 12 hours. And it sat outside overnight for about 12 hours as well. Now, after showing all of this, let me wrap up and say a few things. Number one, a big thank you to Superior Products for sponsoring this video. I think many of the products inside the Superior Products line are specifically geared towards professionals. So it's been about three years since we did any sort of sponsorship on the YouTube channel, but this seemed very appropriate. Secondly, there are a few variables that my products need to fit within for me to really justify putting them on my shelf and using them on a regular basis. Number one is extreme dilutability and really an overbuilt product. What I mean is you get a lot for your money and you can dilute it really heavily because those products are really geared towards the professionals and they're designed to get results. That is definitely a big box checked. Number two, they generally come in gallon sizes so that I'm not running out because I'm buying ready to use 32 ounce spray bottles. It only works if I get a concentrate in a gallon size as a professional. Number three, they're easily accessible. You can buy these products at O'Reilly's and if you cannot get them in stock at O'Reilly, O'Reilly can ship them in generally same day for you. Number four, they need to be cost effective in addition to me being able to dilute them and take them a long way. I need the gallon itself and the concentrate itself to be something that is reasonably priced and this is actually a less expensive wheel cleaner than many other acidic and alkaline cleaners that have a lot better marketing behind them. And finally, this is obvious, I need the product to be able to work really, really well in high humidity and high heat because we all know as a detailer, sometimes you are working in less than ideal conditions and we don't have a studio that's temperature controlled to do everything in. And I think if this video showed anything, it's that 
that is absolutely possible with these products, specifically highlighting, again, the Dark Fury wheel cleaner. If you guys wanna get your hands on this, I will link up an Amazon link below if it's available on Amazon. I'll also guide you to the Superior Products website to the Dark Fury product specifically, as well as the Acidic Wheel Cleaner if you just wanna check out more info there. And like I said, my suggestion is that you actually buy it in person at an O'Reilly if there is one near you. Make sure to leave a comment below before you jump off this video. If you have never used Dark Fury, I would love to know what is your go-to wheel cleaner that you're using right now. And if you do use Dark Fury and I didn't highlight the way that you have used it in an off-label application, list in the comments below the off-label use that you have found Dark Fury is perfect for and the dilution ratio that you use it in. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, remember a great detailer is always learning and I will see you in the next video.